What's going on? Che, che what's going on? What's going on, uh, Minister? We are about to start. Or just Recording in for progress. Members to come in numbers so that we have the requisite uh, quorum. That's what I was trying to do which I think by now um, I'm trying to check Honorable Brink is here. Honorable Direko is here. Honorable Mkalipi is here. Honorable Pumza is here. Honorable Keza is here. Mm, I've seen Honorable Space, she, and then Honorable Funderbart is also here. Yeah, I was just checking the numbers, whether we have the requisite uh, quorum, and I think we should just start our meeting and greetings, Minister. I had received your apology from Mandis, but I'm glad that you are here also. Let me take this opportunity to, to welcome you as well. Then let me quickly deal with apologies that I have. The apologies that I'm having, it's Honorable Kavan Chama, she's on sick leave. Honorable uh, Matlo is also on sick leave. Honorable Species apologized. Honorable, the minister is here, or she will leave the meeting at 20 hours. And then Deputy Minister Wakela is not here due to medical reasons. Then I want to welcome uh, our petitioner and colleague, Honorable Des Desiree van der Waals, and then also Agri Litawa, that is led by uh, one Mr. Tawo Mawunza, and also by Mr. Kubas van Veik, and one Ms. Naomi Xen from the Greater Tsanini Municipality, I suspect, uh, yeah, we have the Mayor, Mayor Maripe Mangena in our midst, 
and uh, Mr. Lilopesem from the provincial copter. I've seen uh, the HOD, she's here. And then also the MEC, welcome MEC is here in our midst. And we also have a DDG Mujaji, she's also here in our midst. Also the DG of DTA, I see, is here, including the DG from the DCOC, she's also here. And then the chief of staff uh, is here as well, uh, Eric Gowini from the office of the MEC. Then that is the delegation that I, I can see also to, yeah, welcome the minister, as I've said, and the colleagues, senior management team from the Department of Cooperative Governance. They're also here in numbers. Also to welcome the minister, I, I, she's here and then she's telling me on a message that the time she was talking, she's just struggling with the connectivity. Her network is not that good, but she's here in our midst. She has also requested to be excused at eight. So the agenda for today, we are dealing with the petition from the farmers and community of Zanini. And then we are going to proceed as follows. Uh, we'll make the opening remarks. Then we'll allow the petitioners to present the petition as led by Honorable Van der Valde. You are welcome, colleague. And then we'll allow Great Dad Zanini Municipality to respond. And then Cocta will comment on the response by Great Zanini. Then I'll allow the, the colleagues to ask questions and we discuss the matters. And then the reason why we are here is I welcome you, Minister, MEC, and colleagues. And we are here as a result of ATC number 87 of the 3rd of July, 2020, that directs the committee to consider and report back on a petition by Agri Letaba an organization that represents farming communities around Sanini, a local municipality in Limpopo. The petition itself, it seeks for us as the National Assembly to investigate severe electricity shortages, power dips, low voltage and poor to no maintenance since 2016 allegedly as a result of the failure by the Zanini local municipality. Today, we are thus entertaining the petition in line with the directive from the National Assembly. And colleagues will recall, this is not the first time we are dealing with greater Zanini municipalities on matters relating to petitions. To take you back the memory line, during a previous engagement on the 24th of June 2020, which dealt with a different matter, we urge all parties to communicate with one another and exhaust all local avenues before escalating matters to the national parliament. And then when one goes through the petitioner's presentation colleagues, it appears to demonstrate convincingly that all local avenues relevant to the matter at the end had been exhausted. And that coming to parliament, it's a measure of last resort. It seems that the communication issues with the municipality remains a problem, despite our previous plea to the municipality. However, I don't want to speak on behalf of the petitioners, 
I want themselves to speak on these matters. The relevant organs of state will then respond. Thereafter, the members will interact with the impulse and deliberate on the way forward. Without wasting much time, I would like to welcome you, uh, Honorable Van der Waard, and hand over to you so that you lead as a member of parliament, then the petitioners uh, will then follow. Over to you, Honorable Van der Waard. Uh, good evening, Chairperson. It's nice to see you again all the way from Limpopo. Um, Chairperson, um, uh, good evening to the Minister, the MEC, the Mayor um, and other colleagues of the Portfolio Committee. I truly appreciate the opportunity again. Um, yeah. Yeah, can we see Honourable Van der Waard? Sure. Yes, I, I made a terrible mistake on that one here. We want to be sure we're not speaking to Ghost Honourable Van der Waard. <laughs> And we humbly plea all the time, all the speakers must make sure that they switch on their videos. There she is, Honorable <laughs> Kalipi. That's your colleague. Yeah. <laughs> Kalipi. yeah, we haven't seen each other for a long time. Thank you, Chairperson, and uh, good evening to the Honorable Minister, MEC, all members of the Portfolio Committee, and you, Chairperson, from our home province. And of course, all the other um, colleagues and stakeholders involved. I'm not going to speak long, Chairperson. I just wanted to appreciate that this petition after the year and the sad year of COVID is now at long last in front of your committee. And that um, the uh, Agri Letapa, led by Tabu Mavunza, Peter Foster, Quibbis from Vaik and Naomi Exa will take you through the petition. Um, and I'm, I'm just very glad that we can discuss this matter as it affects our economy and it affects the work of our people. And we all know that, as I've said at the previous meeting, that Lezzatelli agriculture is really, really uh, playing its role in the economy, jobs, and uh, we cannot have a neglect uh, community and such a big stakeholder. So, Chairperson, if you'll allow, then the uh, petitioners themselves can continue with your program. Thank you, Honorable Van der Waard. I think the leader you said is Mr. Mabunza. Yes. Is the one who's going to present yes, to start or whatever they can agree, isn't it? Yeah. So can I hand over to the petitioners as you do that, introduce yourselves and also the position that you hold in your organization that will have a great deal. Over to you. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, honorable chairperson. Uh, allow me, my name is Peter Foster. I'm the chairperson of Agri Lataba in Zanin. And uh, if you can allow me before Mr. Tabu Mabunza carries on, just for a brief background and uh, introduction. Um, and firstly, uh, good evening to all and uh, thank you for the opportunity. As organized agriculture and concerned citizens, uh, you know, we took the initiative to do something after we've realized that the electricity supply and the maintenance at the GTM was not on a good path. Our approach since the beginning was to assist and not to only criticize. The electricity issues have been experienced since before 2015, but in 2016, it ex ex escalated at a, to a point where consumers experience equipment and income losses. Agri Latawa in a meeting with the Greater Zoni Municipality and warned them uh, about the system that might uh, collapse uh, because of uh, ne neglect of, uh, you know, maintenance. And uh, we were very concerned about it. Agri Latawa contacted NERSA in 2016 regarding the, the dilapidated network, the health and the safety issues, and the greater uh, municipality's obligation to have a distribution license. 
An energy forum was established with various stakeholders, including the uh, GTM, NARSA, Agri Lataba, Business Chamber, and the community representatives. Since 2016, var various organizations have been contacted to assist with the electricity crisis, and numerous correspondence and meetings were held to offer assistance to the greater Zanin municipality. Um, summary of the events have been sent with a petition document in 2020 and all documentation available on request in any more detail. So just for a brief background uh, to introduce ourselves, the team that we are with is uh, Tabu Mavunza and uh, Kubis van Wyk and Naomi Excel. So without any further ado, I'd like to to introduce uh, Tabu and uh, ask him to carry on with the with the with the uh, presentation. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we have made a slight change to the presentation, uh, taking into account uh, the time allocated for us to present, and uh, we just. Uh, going to summarize the issues and we will uh, deem the presentation sent as read. Um, uh, from the time when the petition was sent to date, uh, we want to acknowledge and thank uh, the GTM team for uh, doing the work on um, revamping the line on certain section in, in the municipality to restriction. Uh, there have been some camera systems and fencing installed in, in certain substations. There have been replacement of some transformers, isolators, and auto reclosers. And there might be more of the work uh, that has been achieved, which we don't uh, necessarily have knowledge of uh, due to uh, lack of, of communication. However, it is important that we uh, continue to or report that there's still a large section of the network that has a dilapidated uh, uh, network, uh, instability of supply, or voltage spikes, power lines that does not have sufficient capacity to, to, to power all the required demand from uh, various community and business at large. There's still some uh, serious concerns associated with health and safety um, uh, for consumers, animals, for, even for the electricians and technicians of GTM. Uh, we're still uh, seeing and observing a lot of vegetation control issues um, under power lines, uh, especially where um, there are no access roads along the power line. Security remains uh, one of the major issues um, associated with uh, cables as well as transformers and uh, overall the maintenance of the entire network uh, continues to be an issue. These are some of the pictorial sort of views of, of what you see online. One can see the vegetation that is within the transformer areas and uh, fuses and auto reclosers which are bent, control boxes that are on fire and the condition of some of the substations. A summary of the issues as per in the presentation sent out, um, consumers and ratepayers are not getting the quality of, of electricity as, as outlined by NASA. Uh, large consumers were forced to depend on self-generation to ensure continuity of business and um, have come with, a, with extreme high cost uh, to, to some individuals and business at large, business interruptions due to power failures that remains uh, a critical issue. And, and of course, business are experiencing uh, millions of rents and, and losses. Um, rejection of some of the uh, assistance offered by um, uh, businesses to assist in wherever these issues, as well as uh, lack of reporting on, on certain information, whether progress or um, issues that are experienced within uh, the municipality. Um, and, and this lake and poor contingency plan for areas where the, the supply of electricity is not stable, no interrupted. And the most recent one, of course, uh, poor meter reading and, and of course, collection of revenues uh, continues to be an issue, which we believe will definitely affect the maintenance capacity when it comes to, to funds. As a way forward, um, we're requesting that to 
properly outline or determine the issues and confirm uh, the size of the problem that the GTM team is experiencing. Um, we recommend that there should be a technical audit by an independent body uh, similar or by NASA. That would be a team of technical people that can look at the network in its current form, the demand uh, from the community as well as uh, businesses, as well as uh, the uh, capital that will be required to put back the network in its um, rightful form to, to ensure that everyone can get the electricity as, as NASA has stipulated. And also ring fence some of the allocations, which I believe will also assist the municipality as the electricity revenue collection improves will also be allocated to um, uh, maintaining this uh, electricity network and ensure that we get supply. I think for now, thank you. Um, and this is a summary of the presentation that we, we, we submitted. Thank you, Mr. Mabunda. Then I allow the municipality to then respond on the issues as raised. What I like about it, there is an appreciation of the effort that the, the municipality has done thus far. I've seen Mayor. I've seen. I'm a Losa, uh, Chairperson, Honorable Chairperson. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Greetings to you. Greetings to the Honorable Minister. Greetings to all Honorable Members of the Portfolio. Committee. Greetings to my MEC and uh, his entourage, all the directors and the municipal manager. Uh, Chairperson, just uh, before I can talk about that, just to indicate that uh, uh, in passing, that in terms of in relation to COVID, as Great as the municipality, we continue to be the epicenter uh, here in Mopani. And, uh, but we are trying very hard to make sure that we hit the call national call for, for prevention. Chair, <clears throat> thanks very much. Uh, let me indicate uh, before giving the municipal manager to deal with the technical part, that as greater than the municipality, we have created systems. Uh, so to allow members of the community to play a role, we are exercising participatory democracy. We have established structures, stakeholders, etc., and I must inform the portfolio committee as we appreciate this opportunity that um, AgriLitaba is one of our key stakeholders. They are part of Greater Zanini Municipality Energy Forum. They are part of Greater Zanini Municipality Local Economic Development. But also just to highlight that um, upon the arrival of the MM when he first came to Zanin, I had a special meeting with leaders of the Agri-Litaba because of the understanding of the uh, strategic role they play as far as uh, the economy of Zarin is concerned. We had a meeting just to make sure that we create an open communication, uh, not only through the director, but also to make sure that they've got open access to the MM. My delegation consists of the municipal manager and the director electrical uh, from Greater Zarin Municipality. But I must also indicate before the MM could come in uh, that it is indeed uh, you have instructed in the past that uh, we should continue to have engagement at this level. And that has always been happening through those systems. Absent uh, the COVID-19, I don't think we would have arrived here, but uh, we have created that open system. Perhaps uh, Agri Tower would have indicated to us because they know they can always talk to us um, one of the notable input that they made uh, when the chairperson visited the office of the mayor and we sat and had uh, very cordial discussions was around the issues of transport, where they indicated that because of the, uh, the roads and access and all those kind of stuff, uh, they sometimes see our cars uh, broken, et cetera. 
through that influence and the desires of the community, we ended up buying nine new vehicles uh, to make sure that they, there's access to farms and some proper support. Indeed, we do cooperate in some lot of other areas. And uh, uh, SMA, I was not expecting uh, this thing to come from the top level down here because I think our relationship so far, to the best of my knowledge, uh, is not broken. Well, they might be having other understandings. But I just wanted to highlight these aspects. Uh, you'll also realize as the municipal manager, I will be presenting uh, honorable chairperson that uh, we are invest investing millions uh, to the issues of maintenance because undeniably in the past, we have, not, we have been ignoring the issues of maintenance, but we have awoken to that and we are taking very aggressive steps to make sure that uh, our infrastructure as it will be demonstrated by the municipal manager is seriously uh, uh, maintained. So far, I think um, uh, you'll be able to hear from the presentation that we are trying our best to make sure that Greater Zanin Municipality in the next uh, 40 to 50 years will have stable electricity, but we are trying to address serious backlogs. And through your indulgence, I'll then request uh, the municipal manager, Tabelo Matlala, to deal with the presentation as it was given to the Portfolio Committee for consideration. Thank you very much for your intelligence, Chairperson. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor, for the introduction and presentation of the matters and the political oversight that you've been doing to this regard. Can I allow the MM to proceed with the presentation? I was not given the the, the MM on the list of my, my delegations, the people who are here, but I'm glad he's also here. Over to you, Mr. Matlana. <clears throat> uh, good evening, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Let me also Can acknowledge. You? Can we see you on Dr. Matlana, please? Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair. Let me also acknowledge the Minister, uh, the our MEC. Uh, let me also acknowledge the Member of Parliament. Uh, let me also acknowledge members of the Portfolio Committee. I saw also. Uh, the provincial uh, administrative leader of Salga in the meeting, uh, Misa also. Let me also acknowledge my colleagues from the provincial department uh, of Coxter, uh, colleagues also from national level. Uh, I hope I'm not uh, missing anyone in uh, the acknowledgements. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, can I ask the colleagues from Secretariat to load our presentation? Uh, we did uh, submit a presentation uh, to the Portfolio Committee. Um, I'm not sure whether they have it. Check. Shirin, Andile? Chair, on my side, uh, I have serious technical problems. I won't be able to load it. Did you give the, him the sharing rights? Yes, he does have sharing rights. Mr. Matala, are you able to do it from your side, if I may ask? Yeah, I will try to do it from my side. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Chair. Can you see it? It's busy loading. There we go. Yes, you can proceed. It's on the screen now, Mr. Matala. Mr. Matala, proceed with the presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of uh, the table of contents of the presentation that we have prepared, one is that uh, we will share the background with uh, the portfolio committee. We will also identify the stakeholders we are working with. We will also share with the portfolio committee, a project steering committee and the stakeholders thereof. We will also share with the portfolio committee, the progress we have done with regard to the uh, capital projects and also our revenue enhancement program, the HAMSA report, which is very critical and also the work that we have done around uh, vegetation control. Uh, Chair, Zanin, uh, Greater Zanin Municipality, it's a licensed service provider uh, for electricity within the proclaimed towns and townships of Zanin, Litsitele, Ennisburg, Linyenye, and Nkwankua. GTM is also one of the largest non escom rural distributors of electricity in the country in terms of area. The municipality presently distribute power to an area of approximately 3,500 kilometers squared in extent and which serves more than 14,000 customers. The distribution area does not correspond with the municipal jurisdiction area, with the two main areas of difference being one, the townships of Nkwankua, Linyenye, and the southernmost areas, which are served by ESCO, but fall within the municipal area, and two, Litsitele, Eiland, and Grevelot, which form part of the Bapalaburwa municipality, but are supplied by Greater Zanin uh, municipality. <clears throat> Just as part of background check, a NERSA conducted a compliance audit on Greater Zanin Municipality's electrical network on 27 to 29th of February, 2012. During the audit, NERSA found that the latest master plan, electricity master plan that was done in, the, in 2006 was outdated and had to be reviewed to assist the municipality in forecasting demands. NERSA recommended that Greater Zadin uh, uh, Municipality allocate sufficient funding for a review master plan in the year 2013 14 budget year. NERSA also observed that there was a lack of capitalization of the network of the electrical uh, of the network electrical plant, i.e., con uh, continuous replacement of existing infrastructure as it reaches the end of its useful life. Uh, and mainly that referred to the Zanin main station substation, sorry, and replacement of overhead line networks. 
Another compliance audit was conducted by NERSA in 2017. And out of that, an electricity forum uh, was established. Now, uh, Chair, I thought I should also share with the portfolio committee that in terms of our strategic risk register as a municipality, and with particular reference uh, to the electrical department and electricity in general, we do acknowledge the following risks. One, health infrastructure but also we talk to mitigating measures that we need to undertake as a municipality with regard to addressing uh, that risk. The other issue in the risk register, electrical losses, both technical and non-technical, and also the mitigating measures that the municipality must undertake. I will not bore the committee with uh, all of those, but uh, safe to mention those. Uh, the other critical area which has been identified as a risk is failure to keep up with technology advances and the mitigating measures thereof. In infrastructure theft and theft of electricity equipments like transformers, and also the mitigating measures thereof. Uh, lastly, it talks to compliance uh, with the NERSA requirements. I will jump this uh, slide, uh, which talks to risks and project implementation, and uh, come to the next slide which talks to the electricity forum. Uh, Madam Chair, you will see that the uh, agri Letaba, it's also part of the electricity forum as per the recommendations of the NERSA report. Uh, we have agri Letaba, the business chamber, the farm owners, uh, domestic households, NERSA, and even ourselves as GTM, as the municipality. Chair, after our involvement with the Development Bank of South Africa, which is the DBSA, we established a project steering committee, which is meeting monthly. This uh, project steering committee it's Greater Zanin, it's NERSA, it's DBSA, it's the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, and also ESCO. As part of addressing the problems uh, that we, which were confronting the municipality, we were able to successfully uh, secure a loan of 100 million um, uh, sorry, we were able to secure funding of 100 million, a loan of 90 million, and IPSA grant of 10 million to specifically address uh, the electricity challenges. In 2018 2019 financial year, we received 40 million. And I will go into detail with regard to how we have spent that 40 million as a municipality. In 2019, 2020 financial year, we received 20 million. Uh, I will also go into details as to how we have spent that money. In 2021, 2021 financial year, uh, we received 30 million, which I will also go into details with regard to. Chair, there is a long list. Uh, this is for 2018, 2019. There is a long list of projects 
which the municipality has undertaken to specifically deal with the infrastructure challenges uh, that, are, that, that are confronting the municipality. And uh, area lighting in Tarantal, uh, the main substation work that has been done, uh, prepaid meters, uh, replacement of uh, 11 KB cables, uh, substation tripping batteries, and all that. And those are all of the things that uh, the petition were raised in the petition. And these are the uh, work that we are doing to specifically address that. It's a long list, rebuilding of Hennesbeck uh, 11 KV line, uh, rebuilding of Lushoff South, uh, uh, old post torp um, replacement of old uh, SS1 electrical substation circuit and breakers and all that. Uh, and all of this work, it's, uh, it's about addressing uh, the challenges that are there. Uh, year two, uh, when we were using the 20 million and also the 10 million uh, IPSA grant, uh, those are the projects that we have uh, embarked on. It continues about rebuilding of lines and so forth uh, in order to address uh, the challenges uh, that uh, we are confronted with. Uh, it's a whole list. I tried to put all the projects here uh, in terms of, and these are the pictures uh, uh, about what how the situation was and how we have tried to resolve uh, the problem. Um, uh, there is continuation of the projects. Uh, I just thought I should uh, give the portfolio committee a detailed picture of uh, the work that um, we, 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 we have done with regard to the challenges and the work that has been done by the municipality. This is the mini sub replacement. Uh, this was the work that was done at SS1 substation. Um, we are aware there were rotten poles, they are replaced, auto reclosers installations, and, and so forth. Uh, line rebuilding, water box uh, sub upgrade uh, before the final uh, completion. Black, black Knoll and so forth. Uh, that is the work that has been done. Uh, there is also the Zanin main, the earthworks uh, that has been done. Uh, chair, this picture here, it's the transformers that uh, we have uh, put in at the Zanin uh, uh, sub main station. These are, we replaced transformers that were put in in 1974. And these transformers, they have a lifespan of about 50 years. And they have also uh, expanded in terms of uh, our, our electricity capacity, uh, which would uh, ensure that development is not uh, stifled uh, in the area. Um, uh, these are just some of the pictures and the work uh, that has been done. Uh, going hand in hand with the issues that has been raised about infrastructure and its challenges, uh, its revenue enhancement program, it goes hand in glove. So just to uh, share with the committee, uh, the purpose is supporting Greater Zanin Municipality uh, to focus on uh, uh, revenue generating and loss pertaining to uh, electricity. And then uh, the program entails, uh, the, the program entails one, review existing situational analysis, auditing of customer billing data, electricity tariff review and structuring, uh, engineering contribution policy, cost of supply and single line diagrams, and also electricity 
a stroke water meter audit. Uh, we have developed a detailed roadmap and revenue enhancement program, a number of strategies. Uh, uh, the roadmap includes uh, a number of uh, strategies uh, uh, and projects that have been identified. The municipality is currently in the process of implementing some of the projects of the project, replacement of old meters, setting automated meter reading system for large power users, and also power factor correction analysis. Okay, there was also a report, the Hamsa report, which is almost our guideline uh, document in terms of uh, how we must deal with all the other challenges around meter audits. The purpose was to determine the cause uh, uh, of electricity and revenue losses and come up with a loss minimization and revenue recovery plan. Uh, some of the issues there is to determine the losses of the, the sources of the losses, the audits of electrical infrastructure, commercial process, billing system, tariff structure, revenue recovery plan, asset register, and process flow to determine uh, data integrity. Uh, the HAMSA uh, audits identified critical issues that we need to be dealing with. One, its installations tempered, inaccurate reading of meters, meters not on the database, incorrect tariff, defective meters, and meter in, uh, inaccuracy. Under the comments, you will see that uh, we have work has already begun with regard to uh, uh, addressing uh, some of the challenges that have been identified with regard to uh, uh, meters uh, and uh, addressing finally the revenue uh, issues of the municipality. Okay, this is very important. I saw this slide in the meeting, particularly because one of the reasons why we will have outages is because of uh, if you are not uh, controlling vegetation. Now, as a municipality, uh, this is the work that we have done around bush clearance and vegetation control. Uh, in Ebenezer, for example, we have cleared about 19 kilometers. In Polizzi, about 5.8 kilometers. In Lizitele, uh, about 12.2. Uh, Kranzhoek, uh, Hennesberg, and so forth. All in all, we have cleared about 185.2 kilometers of vegetation control. Uh, uh, chair, um, there was a big concern. The mayor did mention this. The old fleet, in fact, uh, with part of the grant that we got, uh, the IPSA grant of 10 million, we were able to buy nine new I vote. For, uh, for the electrician. Oh, Honorable Bumza, please mute your microphone. Sorry, MM. Uh, Chair, thanks very much. As yeah. part of the work of improving on the challenges that we are having, we have also partnered with uh, ESCO and we will be uh, uh, partnering on the following areas, energy losses management, pricing and tariff structures, maintenance and operations, revenue management and collection, billing, technical skills development, investment, network and master planning. 
we will further be partnering on demand side management, smart metering, and public uh, lighting. Chair, I just thought I must bring to the attention of this meeting, now it was not a, one of the issues, but it has a direct link. It's with regard to how we are managing uh, ESCOM debt. As we are owing ESCOM about 83 million, uh, 567,000. The breakdown, uh, it's, as, as, it's as it appears on the slide, the principal debt plus the interest. Uh, we that because we have willing agreements with ESCOM, ESCOM is owing the municipality uh, 24 million. The question would be asked, when will we be paying off all this debt? Uh, we are likely to pay off this balance by the 15th of uh, July, um, when we have received our equitable share, we will then be able to offset uh, this debt. Just also to bring to the attention of the meeting that we are acutely aware of the challenges that we are confronting the municipality. Over the last four years, uh, this is now over and above uh, the, 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 the loan and the grant from municipal owned revenue. Uh, 2020, 2021, we spent about 12 million. Uh, 1920, we spent about uh, 15 million. Uh, 1819, we spent about 20 million. Uh, 1719, we spent about uh, 14 uh, million. And this is mainly on maintenance of uh, the infrastructure. Chair, I would assume that would be the last slide. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, MM. You can remove the slide from the screen. Yes, thank you so much. Can I check from the department, MEC Makamu Coxta from the province? Do you want to comment? on the presentation and any yes, other matter that you think is of interest over to you MEC. thanks uh, chair of the portfolio and greetings to honorable members and greetings to the minister uh, and uh, the municipality of uh, greater than uh, I don't have much to say, but uh, I must indicate that after we received the petition, we had our engagement, but also our team to want to verify some of the work that uh, the municipality is trying to do in order to make sure that we respond to the challenges as outlined by the petitioners. Moreover, the details of each and every farm that is going to require a bigger supply of electricity, which also showed a number of occasions uh, the intention to grow their farms, which in turn will create jobs in and around the area of Zanin. As the department, we committed to be supporting the municipality in refurbishing uh, their substations so that they can be able to minimize the challenges of electricity. We did not necessarily do this uh, without considering that the fact that the country itself is facing challenges with the electricity supply, hence we always continue to be having low shedding, but also appreciated the leadership of the municipality uh, in terms of the 100 million that they are investing uh, through the grant and the loan, but at the same time, looking at the amount that they were using from their own revenue in refurbishing the electrical uh, supply in the area. So I can say that we had engagement and our team is here from the officials who are working towards supporting 
despite that the MIG does not necessarily allow them to be doing or taking part of uh, to be supporting the uh, electrical uh, projects. But uh, with their own revenue and the grants that they are there, we continue to monitor their performance and they will satisfy the department and continue to support. That will be the only comment that we'll be able to make for now. But uh, we appreciate that the petitioners have raised their matters uh, that will be able to be dealt with. And in their presentation, they were also indicating the work that the municipality is doing in order to resolve some of the challenges. I thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, MEC. Uh, Mr. Matlala, can you mute, mute your microphone, please? Colleagues, maybe before that, is there anything that the commissioner wants to comment on based on the feedback from the municipality? Let me allow the petitioners then a honorable fund referral to come after them. Thank you, Jay. Is there anything that you want to comment on? Also, any other person who wants to comment if on what the municipality has presented as the response to your issues? Thank you. Mr. Fossil, Thank you, Minister. If there's anything you want to say as well, you can see. You can have this opportunity. So you are starting. Okay, proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just before Tabu was the one Mabunza carries on, just a couple of comments. Firstly, Agri Litaba initiated and established the Electricity Forum, not the GTM. Secondly, a communication is really disappointing. In our summary or our presentation, we indicated that we have sent 80 letters and emails since 2016, which 63 of those without any feedback or reply. So the frustration regarding the communication is very high. Thirdly, the, there are WhatsApp groups in this uh, regarding correspondence and quick communication. Um, please note that there are six WhatsApp groups, which uh, most of the, uh, uh, some of the uh, GTM's uh, electricity members are part of. And um, only in June, there were power off reports of 756 reports. And you can carry down the whole list, um, which that is only one WhatsApp group. So all of what we've heard is very good on, on paper. Uh, we need to see results. And um, uh, that's where I will uh, stop at the moment and ask uh, Tabu to carry on, please. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I think following everything that you have mentioned, which covered some of my points, I would just want to request that um, the GTM team maybe share the compliance report. It is very difficult for us to even imagine how they passed the NASA compliance audit with the condition of the control room as, as, as is. Thank you. Uh, thank you, colleagues. It looks like we've lost the chair due to the network. Uh, I can see that there's a Kobas. Uh, you also want to add something? Um, yes, Mr. please. Mr. Kobas? Um, okay, thanks. Um, I'm, I'm representing, I mean, I'm, I'm part of Agri Litaba um, in, in the Letsiteli area, and I'm representing a farming organization, medium size. 
And I think, um, first of all, I want to acknowledge what, what the MM told us. Um, it, it's nice to see the projects. Unfortunately, we were not really aware of that. I mean, our last communication with the GTM was a virtual conference we held on the, 20, um, the 20th of May 2020. And thereafter, we had no luck in communicating with them, even as part of the Energy Forum. So all progress that was made was unaware to us. Um, I just want to point out some of the photos showed um, is in the network that, that speaks to new connections and specifically connections within the, the Tsanin area. Um, we, as let's tell you, as the farming community, are more on the outlying edges of um, the Tsanin town, and, and we, we are on a different part of the network. Unfortunately, a network that was not maintained according to what was explained and what, what is expected. Um, as, as a farming operation, I can only tell you of our own experiences. And I think that is what the frustration is of the people on the ground. We have daily outages. Um, we have um, equipped ourselves with generating capacity. We're a citrus farming operation, so we've got a big pack house. We employ roughly 800 people um, during our season. And we had to go to extreme lengths and expend a lot of money in terms of generating capacity in terms of diesel that's consumed. And all of that money is taken out of the local economy. That money is taken away from job creation, from um, renewing, remunerating people, appointing new people. And I mean, that's the real cost for us. That's, that's the people on the ground. That's not the fancy presentations. That is what we experience as farmers in the Letsitele area. Um, the municipal manager um, commented on clearing vegetation on lines. We, as a farming community, offered our assistance, saying that we we have all that infrastructure, we've got the manpower, we've got everything to assist the GTM in, in clearing lines. I mean, if you look at the statistics, I think they um, the municipal manager indicated the um, length of line they cleared and I mean, that is uh, in, in a network that stretches over 3,500 square kilometers to have cleared something like 150 kilometers in three years. That is never, ever going to speak to a, 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 a well-maintained network. So we feel that, nothing, that not sufficient energy is being exerted and, and work is being done on the ground to make sure that we've got a reliable electricity supply. Additional issues that came into play was billing of electrical accounts. I mean, we are reporting our, uh, our meter readings monthly to the GTM just so we can get built accurately. I think the GTM is losing out on a lot of revenue by not effectively billing all their users. And I think that must be a big loss for them in terms of revenue. So probably if we start and we fix that, we can already address half of the issues that, 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 that the GTM is experiencing in terms of of maintenance of, of a very, very, very big electric network. And, and uh, I have really sympathy for them. I think um, it's unfair of um, the GTM to be in this position to look after such a big network. Um, and, and yeah, once again, I, I would like to acknowledge the work that they've done. Um, I mean, they've done a lot and, and, and the, the technical support staff on the ground are always helpful. They are going, out of their way to assist us and to help us to, 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 to get power if we've got a power outage or a phase out. And those guys are working throughout the night. I mean, they're working relentlessly to, 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 to deliver service to us. And we are very appreciative of that. But unfortunately, I mean, the reason why we are here tonight is not because for a lack of trying. I mean, we've tried, we've tried to communicate, we've tried to assist but it's at the point where we are suffering huge losses as businesses and as individuals. Thank you. Mr. Kobas, also to note that there's a part that the municipality is playing their part. Tatana is there anything you want to comment or the two previous speaker has covered you? Thank you, Madam Chair. I think we, we have already made our comments um, when you lost connections. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, colleagues, Honorable Van der Waals, can you hear you first, then we'll hear the other colleagues. I see the end of Honorable Brink as well. Yes, Honorable Van der Waals. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you for uh, a quick response. Chairperson, yes, I think um, what is very important to note, and, um, and most of the colleagues on the line from the legislature and the municipality know that, and yourself, that I am originally a councillor from Zanin and been very involved in communities. And we have here, and I, I would like the mayor to listen very carefully because he's always sort of trying to hit people about democracy, etc. But chairperson, here we have a major stakeholder and they have always been willing to even contribute when they have requested audits and everything or labor and resources for clearing lines. But then we come back again and say the mayor tonight that um, uh, there's a sort of an open door, they must come and talk. Uh, they don't have to go to parliament. I know it's not nice for municipalities to be reported to parliament, but that is unfortunately, we are in a people's parliament and they have done, uh, you know, and indeed um, we have heard from stakeholders that the last communication was more than a year ago. And I would really like to ask the MM, you talk about there was, um, a meeting held on the 4th of June with ESCOM. And Chairperson, if we really know that our biggest stakeholder most probably, or one of our biggest stakeholders uh, in our areas has issues with electricity and there's an ESCOM meeting, may I ask, did we invite um, um, uh, Agri Lataba then to, to come and also put the issues on the table or to get an opportunity to to uh, translate the issues and surely NARSA plays a big role too and I just find it very strange that every time we bring uh, Zanin municipality to the table that the mayor um, actually goes on your you know we must so, sort of hinting that we must keep things inside the municipality we cannot treat our biggest stakeholders like this there are jobs at stake there's an economy at stake and this town and surrounding areas like uh, uh, Mujaji's Kluif, et cetera, is dependent on this specific stakeholder, so to speak, especially for jobs. Our people on the ground in the villages in all 34 wards of Zanin are dependent on jobs in the agricultural sector. So I just wanted to mention that I think there's not a wall between the stakeholder and the communities, but there should be the communication is not pleasant and the electricity matters have been going on in this municipality for many, many, many years. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Van der Welt. I was told there's somebody from Salka as well in the province. Can I check if that person is there before I allow members? Is there someone from Salga in this meeting? Yes, Chris Chaperson. Yeah, because I think uh, based on our engagement, I'm raising this because you can see the problems that are NERSA and ESCOM related. Maybe moving forward, we would like to also understand what is Salga's input on this? Because I know nationally there's been ongoing engagement on matters where in areas where the ESCOM license area and the issues around the tariffs on all those things that NERSA has to do with municipality. Does the, maybe at some point you need to come and address us on this one. The municipality is having raised some challenges. I wanted to check who's the person who's here so that you take notes as well. Well, not necessarily for tonight, but if you want to comment at a later stage, I'll give you space to do that. 
you want to do it now or you want to allow the members to raise questions because there might be issues that will also just hold it there for now. Can I allow Honorable... Yes, I'll hold sure. Yeah. Honorable Brink followed by Honorable Pumza in that order. Honorable Brink, then it will be Honorable Kleza. Honorable Thanks, Brink. Very, thanks very much, Chair. Can you hear me and see me clearly? Yes, I can see you clearly as well. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, it would seem to be that the problem is persistent uh, and uh, and prolonged interruptions of electricity that affect this particular stakeholder who is an industry. Uh, you know, it's the agricultural sector, but it's, and essentially it's an, it's an industry made up of various role players. Um, and, you know, when a petitioner reaches parliament, uh, it, it's, uh, we, we can't really, uh, um, say, well, it's disingenuous because they should have, you know, followed w whatever procedure, especially if the petitioner shows that they've tried 63 times that uh, to speak to the municipality and they haven't received a response. So um, I, you know, the, the mayor's comments, he must stop being surprised that the petitions reach this committee and maybe start opening his office so that the petitions don't reach the committee. I, I don't think the petitioners uh, will will to to you know for ulterior purposes come to parliament. It's because there's a real issue, and it is our job as uh, legislators to take that seriously. Um, Chair, I have noted the uh, pictures and the and the list of capital projects that were flighted by the municipal manager to say that this is uh, how the problem is being addressed, but it's not exactly clear whether those capital projects are in fact relate to this problem of continuous power interruptions to the uh, Latawa community. Um, in fact, the municipal manager can show any number of pictures and, and uh, figures, and, and they might not at all relate to the area or, or to the specific problem. So. There was a request by the petitioners for an audit to be conducted on the state of the reticulation network and the electricity infrastructure uh, by an outside party so that there can be an objective assessment and so that budgetary and IDP decisions can be informed by the actual situation. Um, the municipal manager mentioned a NERSA audit from 2012 and making certain recommendations, which I'm not sure, he didn't tell us whether those recommendations were ever uh, implemented or whether they're busy being implemented. So, so given that uh, the, the NURSA audit was in 2012, speaking about a master plan of 2006, can we please have an answer from the municipality to the petitioner's uh, request for an audit to be done on, on the reticulation network as it affects the Lataba community. That's the first uh, question, a uh, chairperson. Uh, secondly, um, can we just get clarity from the municipality on whether they have the internal skills uh, to fulfill their NURSA license conditions? And we know that they're not fulfilling the license conditions given uh, if, if the number of outages that, that is reported by Agri Lataba is accurate and we didn't get uh, we didn't get a denial from the municipal manager of those outages, then in fact they aren't meeting their NURSA license conditions in terms of keeping the electricity on for a minimum time. So one of the things that I think we have to hear from the municipality, have you got electrical engineers, have you got sufficient skills? Uh, to in fact uh, do what needs to be done. And then lastly, Chair, there was mention in um, the presentation of help being offered by this, by the petitioner to the municipality. Um, and that offer not receiving a, a, a welcome response. 
Can we just get clarity from the petitioner what assistance was offered? Uh, and then from the municipality, why there was no response or a negative response to the offer of assistance? Because um, that, when, whenever I hear that, it, it, it's always quite shocking if, in fact, that is the situation, if there are people with resources that, above and beyond the rates and taxes and tariffs that they pay, are they also willing to, in the interest of the community, give assistance and that assistance is not taken up or, or no explanation is given why the assistance can't be taken up. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Honorable Brink. Honorable Mpumza, over to you. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and uh, greetings to the Minister and the MEC and the colleagues. Chairperson, I don't want to assume um, uh, in the presentation by M.M. Capello Maklala. Of course, uh, the, the mayor's uh, preamble was indicating that uh, an admission that uh, before NERSA got in and to make recommendations that they must review. Uh, that of 2006 and 2016, that uh, as a municipality, they had not been uh, um, uh, woken up. They have not woken up. They have not been uh, uh, apparently um, budgeting for. This, which has become a contributory factor. Uh, to the aging infrastructure that is now confronting them in relation to the outburst of their transformers and all that. Do I get it that uh, the recommendation of NELSA 2012 and that of 2017 are the projects and this funding really responding to those recommendations of NELSA? as well as uh, addressing uh, the challenges that had been raised by the petition. That would be my first question. And secondly, Chair, the, I hope that the mayor was not disingenuous when he was saying that they have woken up to the challenge, has that indication. But what I'm getting is that uh, even from uh, the petitioners, is that uh, it appears that uh, the main challenge now has been uh, the lack of constant communication between uh, Greater Zanin and the Agri Litaba community as people who are part of the Energy Forum. <laughs> and uh, I don't get a sense as to why then there were three letters uh, that were not responded to. And uh, this an indication that perhaps, although the Agri Litaba community um, were uh, members of the Energy Forum, and uh, they have been eager to assist. And then therefore, the, the point is, what needs going forward is that there should be an improvement around the communication between Greater Litaba and uh, the Agri community, because there seems to be the challenge around these matters. Because I don't see them now coming up raising to say they are disputing uh, the presentation by the municipality. But I want to get it from the municipality that indeed, uh, this funding and these capital projects are really responding to the gaps and the challenges that were raised by NELSA and they are actually responding to their recommendations, both in the 2012 and 2017. The other critical factor in the presentation was that uh, I noticed that the municipality is being owed 24 million by ESCOM and at the same time, the municipality has uh, 
a willing agreement with ESCOM while it is a license provider. Um, the, the, this matter in some municipalities is a challenge, this willing agreement, where you get ESCOM actually using their power without paying them. Um, is it that uh, ESCOM is ESCOM paying uh, um, uh, regularly uh, what is owed to the municipality since they have a willing agreement? My last uh, question, Chair, would be, or comment or other question, in the presentation, there is a reflection of an aging infrastructure. And uh, how often is the municipality appreciating the strategic function of assets in actually building the economy and contributing towards rendering service to its communities? I'm asking this because in the report, there is a reflection that uh, the the electricity infrastructure is aging. And I hope that uh, perhaps this intervention perhaps is addressing that by perhaps refurbishing that, that, that aging infrastructure so that it will continue to sustain services in the economy of the area. Why I'm saying you're not appreciating because recording stopped. That, uh, in some municipalities, recording in progress the of asset management and the asset policy and the disposal are matters that are not fully attended to. Hence, we see that infrastructure is aging. And the question of forward planning is a matter that should uh, assist the municipality in its planning and providing infrastructure so that on time, these matters are addressed so that the, the, the services are resilient and uh, then the economy will grow. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Pumza. Honorable Keza, over to you. As I said, uh, the minister asked to be excused at eight. She has left the meeting at eight. Oh, thanks, Chair. I'm going to. You want to appreciate your coming. Thanks, Chair. I'm going to ask you to excuse me and the colleagues in terms of uh, the, the video. Uh, because it's dark here. Uh, Chair, uh, I just want to ask, and I will be brief, Chair, because some of the issues that I wanted to raise have been covered by my colleagues. Uh, so I do not want to, 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 to regurgitate that. Uh, Chair, the municipality uh, in the form of the MM, uh, spoke to the issues of uh, maintenance of, of, of maintenance of the infrastructure, and uh, I didn't get it. Uh, can 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 he clarify as to how these pictures that we're seeing here uh, in the presentation that of of boxes that are that are on fire uh, uh, speak to the maintenance of of infrastructure and have they satisfied themselves that uh, 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 truly in these areas uh, that that have been uh, 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 presented by the by the petitioners are indeed uh, uh, resolved because i was tempted uh, chair when 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 uh, i almost interjected and i and i stopped myself because I was asking why the municipalities allowed a situation to obtain uh, as to that 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 put uh, uh, that 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 brought the, the petitioners here because uh, they they came from a local sphere of government jumped province uh, and now they are in in in, in national copter. And, and and how could it have been if there was no problem? Uh, surely the problem of communication is what we are pick, picking up here uh, at Jefferson. Uh, and and my, my question would be on that, how will the department then resolve 
the problems of communication in municipalities with 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 consumers especially as it relates to irregular meter readings and the amounts that uh, the, the consumers uh, should pay there uh, they spoke to the transformers uh, lifespan of 50 years uh, uh, and they spoke to the capacity i don't know if they spoke to the capacity of those uh, 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 unless uh, something just uh, uh, distracted me there chair i just wanted to check the capacity whether the capacity they are talking about will speak will indeed speak to them to the to the to the question that we are, we are in we're facing today uh, of of the petitioners uh, because they've been they, they they've been they complained about uh, the issues of of communication once again so i just want to to ask if the lifespan will indeed uh, the capacity will indeed uh, address the 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 issues uh, as raised by the petitioners and if so how so because i didn't get the 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 how uh, of of uh, of uh, of 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 the capacity of those uh, of those uh, transformers. Uh, the other one, Chair, is that uh, uh, would speak to the. Uh, I think that Chair, those were my three issues, Chair, because the other ones really that 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 I wrote were covered by the by the petitioner by by the by my colleagues here. Uh, just just the the communication part uh, how 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 did they allow it to get here and then they come here and just uh, say that it shouldn't have, have been here and so on uh, in front of the committee uh, how 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 did they help the situation because here in uh, in, in in the constitution in in uh, section 152 1b on the objects of the local government. It says uh, the objects of local government are to ensure the provision of services to communities in a sustainable way. Honorable Tazen, thank you. Honorable Hornevald, followed by Honorable Mkalipi in that order. Over Thank to you, you Honorable Hornevald. Thank you, Chairperson. Firstly, my apologies for being late. And secondly, Chair, my apologies for my camera still being switched off um, uh, due to my internet connection or else I will break up and you won't be able to hear me. So if that's fine, Chair, then I will proceed. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Chair firstly, um, I only have one or two questions, but I want to explain before I ask the question. Firstly, in terms of the Systems Act, it's, it defines in Section 1, it says local community or community in relation to a municipality means that body of person comprising of the residents of municipality, the ratepayers of municipality, any civic organization or non-governmental private sector or labor organization, and so forth, visitors or other people residing outside the municipality. Then it says the legal nature of a municipality. The legal nature of a municipality is in B, consists of the political structure and administration of the municipality and the community of the municipality. Then chair in section four, two, um, it says um, that the municipality has a duty, firstly, to encourage the involvement of the local community and consult the community about the level quality range and impact of municipal services provided by the municipality either directly or, directly or through another service provider. Chairperson, and then I just want to click over. And then in terms of uh, section six, it says duties of municipal administration. The administration of a municipality must be responsive to the needs of the local community, establish clear relationships and facilitate, uh, facilitate the cooperation and communication between it and the local or community, 
give members of the local community full and accurate information about the level and standard of municipal services they are entitled to receive, and inform the local community how the municipalities manage of the cost involved and the person in charge. Then that goes on, Chairperson, to say that in terms of the municipalities' bylaws, there should be at least um, a standard way of response to the community where, for example, they have a policy in place to say that when they receive a letter from a community member, it must be answered within seven days. So one of the biggest problems we have is municipalities not communicating to the, to the communities, and especially in this case, you can see it as well. So I want to find out from the municipality, do you have a policy in place for communication? And if so, do you actually apply it um, because what we can see it is not happening. And if it's not in place, when will it be in place? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kronewald. Can I hand over to you, Honorable Mkaliki? Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. I think I'm a little bit covered by my colleagues who spoke on this matter. I think my take on this matter, Chairperson, is always the case whereby the residents in a nutshell complain about the communication between themselves and the municipality. Because the presentation that we received here from the MM, it's very clear in terms of how are they going to um, deal with the challenge of electricity in a nutshell. So there are some uh, projects that are on the pipeline to address the issue of electricity uh, because of the presentation that we, we, we receive here as a portfolio committee. But what is very important that I have also a, a witness chair is that there is no communication and honorable um, um, my sister here I can't remember his name I, I'm avoiding to announce wrongly his name Desri I, I always call her Van der Waal. yeah honorable, honorable Van der Waal. and one colleague uh, also mentioned that they have written to the municipality 63 times so I think there is a main important issue that it must be addressed here. Because the municipality comes here with the province to defend themselves to say that no, they take it very serious. Uh, even this stakeholder, they also take them very serious. But the issues that they are raising is the issue of writing to the municipalities uh, about more than 63 times, but there is no response. So I should suggest that the municipality must um, attend to and every person who is within their jurisdiction, even if they think that they are not important, or maybe the municipalities find very difficult to respond to each and every uh, letter or any correspondence that is, 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 is written to them, but they must have a way to communicate with the residents. Because Chairperson, I think uh, we also spoke about this in the committee before, that at some point, we found it very difficult as a committee that we must uh, sit down and listen to the petition because there is a province. If the municipality does not want to save its people, I think Cocta and the MEC is here. And it's not the first time the MEC is here as well. So we also tend to them to ask them, what do they do? Or was this petition not um, brought to their attention at a provincial level? Because we are supposed to be the last result as the committee. Uh, especially if uh, Honorable um, Desri is here, He's, she's a member of parliament. I think this is a second petition that she also brought to parliament. Uh, as a member of parliament, I think that she's supposed to be also to be respected as a member of parliament residing in those municipalities, instead of the municipalities just wait until they are being called by the committee to say, come and intervene, is their job. And then, uh, Without saying that, Chairperson, I think going forward, they'll fund each other and they must just agree on, on, on terms of reference on how are they going to meet and address this issue. Because I think according to the, um, the, the, the presentation that was presented here, they have a very good uh, plan in terms of addressing what is being raised in terms of the shortages of the municipality. That is my take, Chairperson, is the information and the communication between uh, the, the, the stakeholder and the municipality. Once they address that, I think also the MEC can also ensure that uh, there is that uh, communication between the two. I know that the chairperson also asked Salga also to comment 
Yeah, so we also appreciate the comment of Salka in this regard. And also to, 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 to caution the municipality uh, in terms of communicating with their residents in order to avoid uh, for us, for this committee to become uh, municipalities because the municipalities must play their role in terms of addressing matters that communities are, are complaining about. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you. You will forgive me, I'm in the dark too. While I'm trying to get the light, I'll hand over to Honorable Jericho. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think uh, as we are here as the spheres of government, we need also to remind each other of our roles and responsibility. And as the municipality, they are responsible for providing services to the people. And in providing service to the people, they must also ensure that they have a good and healthy working relationship with the stakeholders. And I concur with what Honorable Mukalipe has just raised on the issue of communication. Communication is very important in each and every institution. So it, it really uh, feels so disappointing to hear that there was a lot of communique that was sent to the municipality, but unfortunately the municipality did not fail to respond on those uh, communique that were sent to them. However, we believe that uh, they, will have, they will learn from their mistake and improve in future. Uh, Chair, I also want to check with the provincial uh, copter. If they were aware of this uh, situation, or did they only became aware of the situation when it came to us as a as a, as, as parliament? And uh, uh, lastly, chair, uh, my network was very bad. I don't know if I have uh, heard the MEC properly. Uh, uh, in his comment, uh, the MEC committed to assist the municipality with building a substation. So, can the MEC go into details? When are they anticipating to build it? And how are they going to build it? Is there a fund available from the department as we speak for that project? Or are they still going to go back to the department to check if they have funds and what? Because the problem is that we tend to make commitments. And if the commitment does not have a time frame, we'll then be not able to be to hold anyone accountable. So I will request that uh, when if, uh, if I've had the MEC correctly, can you please give us a time frame so that we can be able to to monitor the performance of COCTA in the province through the commitment that, uh, through the time frame of, uh, of this commitment, so that at least we are able to be specific on whatever that we are addressing, instead of uh, agreeing that I will do this and that and that, and we don't have a time frame, and then 10 years pass or five years pass, we are still on that item, and we can't hold anyone accountable because there would have not been any time frame that was set. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Jureko. I think on my side as well, I've got some few issues to ask. If you look on slide eight of the presentation, it talks about stakeholders. And then it refers to you to your electricity forum. And then it lists the number of stakeholders, the agri-literal business business community, farm owners, domestic households, NERSA, and, and the municipality. Then it's just to add up on what of the colleagues are saying to say, when I'm seated there, I'm then asking myself a lot of questions. If indeed there is this stakeholder in this electricity forum that is there, how often and how frequent does it meet? so that uh, we don't confront ourselves with the situation where in now we even hear that there's three, three letters that have been written to the municipality. What then becomes the agenda of this forum? And then I can see also in terms of the, uh, my understanding is that when you go to later to paragraph, to page nine of the presentation, there's a list of a project steering committee as well where in it holds regular pro monthly progress meeting. And then we know that the stakeholder excludes the domestic household farm owners, business community, and agri -literal. My understanding was that this steering 
project committee that is there, it has a responsibility to also to report uh, frequently to this stakeholder because the business that this uh, steering committee is processing is in relation to the matters that of interest to the stakeholders as uh, listed in a uh, uh, slide number eight above. Maybe I would like to get the comment, is it that you create structures that at the end of the day, then they don't meet. How frequent, because if indeed the stakeholders were meeting, we couldn't be where we are today. Then I'm looking on slide 19. Uh, slide 19 is talked about your DPSA funded capital projects. And then there is an existing on the left of that slide. You speak talking about of an there's a picture. Underneath you have written there is an existing table by crane truck. It's not reachable by train crane truck. Then I'm asking a lot of questions to say if it's not reachable, what has happened? And if indeed this is the transformer that is creating the problems that the farmers are having and everybody who's here. Uh, what are you going to do about it? Because how was that transformer then put there if it's not reachable? What are the circumstances and what is the municipality doing to make sure? Because for you to leave it here to tell us it's not reachable by green truck, what next? It's not the transformer that is causing all these problems that are there. And what are you doing about it? So then the other issue that one want clarity on, it's on ESCOM. I'm trying to quickly get the slide. Yeah, it's on slide number 36. Then you're saying uh, ESCOM active partnering. And then the, the areas that are available for active partnering with ESCOM energy loss management, pricing, maintenance and operations, revenue man management, collection, technical skills, including investment and network uh, planning. And then, then these are the areas where in you seem to be working collectively together with ESCOM. And then it's related to my earlier question that I've raised to Salga to say then, if that is the case, then you are having this active partnering initiative with ESCO. Why then do you have these problems? Is it another uh, structure? Because you are saying you are going to also sign a partnering ag agreement between yourselves and ESCOM, and there's going to be integration office between ESCOM and the municipality that's going to be established. I've got difficulty to, to say this is going to happen without any timeline attached to all this. And then, is it a recent thing because to decide on the area of council resolution, but at the same time, oh, this is the area. So it means then council can decide which ones, which are the ones are you recommending here? Because you have listed almost 12 areas for active partnering. And uh, I know this is the recent meeting. That was held on the 4th of uh, June, 2021. And then my question is, say, what mechanism and measures have you put in place to make sure that all this that you are seeing in these two slides, slides 36 and 37, become a reality? Then there is a total debt owed to the municipality, total debt owed to to ESCOM by the municipality, which is amounting to 83 million. And then also, 
on that one i'm glad that you are uh, you've signed a debt arrangement forms with escom so that then uh, they don't switch you off so that you continue to provide this electricity to our people. But also at the same time, you are saying you are being owed an amount of 24 million by ESCOM. And I think Honorable um, Pumza has dealt with this matter then maybe that's the reason that there's a payment arrangement and what makes them not offset this debt, this debt that they owe you with the money that you owe them so that then it helps you also on that. Because if ESCOM cannot pay you the 24 million and then they offset it, then it's it so those the clarity on your parts uh, so i think if the issue of stakeholders gets attended to then maybe i won't be able to follow up on the issues that i want to raise because on paper and on face value there are structures that are there that are supposed to communicate and resolve issues of electricity around Zanin. Then how have we arrived here under the circumstances? Over to you, Majoro and the team. Uh, Mr. Kobas, anything that you wanted to, 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 to add on or you want to assist in responding to our questions as members? I see your hand is up. Yes, you want Madam to Chair. respond. You will respond. Yes, please, Madam Chairperson. Sorry, I'm interrupting a bit now. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, the way this meeting, I mean, one of the directions taken was that the issue is with communication, and that's definitely one of the serious issues. But there's a lot of underlying technical issues that are also not addressed, and I don't want us to skim over this based on a very successful presentation by the GTM. I think um, the report that was mentioned that NASA did on the GTM in 2006, they commented that the capital, the recapitalization budget, and I think at that time it was 1.6 billion rand was not sufficient. So if we look at the 100 million rand DBSA loan or grant and the 62 million self invested by the um, GTM over the past four years in maintenance, I don't think that's sufficient. I think a Majoro, lot of the... can you mute, mute your microphone in the meantime? I'm asking the mayor to mute his microphone in the meantime so that we can hear you properly. Thank you, mayor. It's fine. Proceed. Sorry about that, Kobas. Okay. Um, Proceed. So, so I, I think part of the issue is the, the communication is definitely a part of the issue, but then there's also the technical aspect. And, and we are definitely not experts when it comes to, to infrastructure design, but I mean, on, on uh, Agri Lataba Forum, we had four in engineers working on this. I mean, I'm an engineer, Tabo is an engineer. We had two very senior engineers also assisting with this pro problem. So it's not just a question of the community um, not being heard or listened to. We also have a technical understanding of the issues. And I think the presentation that was given by the GTM, although it, 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 it tends to alleviate some of the issues are definitely not the, the magic wand that's going to resolve all the issues. I think a lot of the money that's been spent and that's been reported on speaks to reticulation within the Tsanin town area. It doesn't speak to reticulation and upgrading of the infrastructure in the rural areas. And I think the rural areas are the major contributors to the revenue streams um, because they are the farming communities, the business communities. Those are the people that use the, the um, high volumes of energy. And I think that, that reflects in the revenue stream that is generated from those rural areas. Um, that's just what I wanted to say, um, Honorable Chairperson. I allowed you so that as and when the mayor and the team respond will also address the issues that you 
you could uh, raise him. Thank you for lowering your hand now. Over to you, Majoro and team. Thanks, thanks, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Let me allow the MM to first deal with the issues, then I'll follow up. MM? Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor, uh, uh, and, and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I will I will start with uh, the first question, which was talking to where that the presentation that the municipality has done it's responding to the challenges. Uh, it's true. The presentation is responding to the challenges as per the audit compliance audit uh, that was conducted by NERSA in 2017. Uh, when I was referring to 20, uh, uh, 2006 and also 2012, I was giving a historic background to the matters, but we also have a, an, a another report of NERSA of 2017. The Zanin main substation and the replacement of overhead uh, lines was a direct response uh, to the issues that were raised uh, in the NERSA audit uh, report. Uh, I just thought I should uh, 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 respond to that. There was the issue of aging infrastructure. It is true that uh, we have uh, aging infrastructure, but part of the refurbishment of the lines it's to address the, the aging infrastructure. The, there was the issue of the boxes uh, that were on fire. Um, in cases like those, uh, our maintenance team would go and replace those uh, to make sure that uh, those are corrected. And there was the issue of uh, the capacity uh, in our uh, electrical department. We have qualified uh, electricians we have uh, uh, an electrical engineer. Uh, we have highly skilled people. Over and above those, we have uh, people with experience who have worked uh, with the network for many years. Uh, the chairperson were raised the issue of the structures. The project steering committee reports to the energy uh, forum. The energy forum is supposed to meet quarterly, which is four times a year. Chair, I must be very upfront here. There is constant communication between ourselves as the municipality with uh, not only Agri Litaba, but myself, I've met with Agri Litaba many times. The gentleman in the meeting, 
I have met with them in more than, I don't know how many times. I have been to their offices. They have been here in the municipal offices. Uh, I want to address the issue of communication so that the portfolio committee has an in-depth understanding of the issues at hand. <clears throat> For me, the issue is not communication. For me, the issue which we need to resolve is the strategic approach to electricity in Greater Zanin between, uh, between uh, Agri Letaba and the municipality. Uh, and uh, I just want to correct also uh, because I think the committee might end up uh, having a miss. Uh, a, a, a misrepresentation. The issue of the 62 communication uh, letters is not really 62. Um, uh, there are emails that are sent uh, to, to the municipality. It's not on the basis of the municipality not responding. Uh, uh, Mr. Foster mentioned the issue of the WhatsApp. If uh, members of the community, uh, sorry, com committee can look, there is extensive communication, even myself on my phone. I sometimes have 300 or so WhatsApps on the issue of uh, 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 electricity, on the issues of uh, electricity. Uh, so it's something that we are attending to. They have also even attested here that uh, our maintenance team it's working around the clock, 24 hours around the clock on matters that uh, need to be uh, attended to. Like, as I say, uh, um, and in most cases also, uh, they do their own independent research and uh, bring those to the meeting and expect that we must, as the municipality, except those without even having interrogated uh, the matters. I just thought I should put matters into context because the, there are things uh, around the issue of communication uh, that are not uh, uh, being said here. That is why I thought I should raise this matter that uh, at a strategic level, um, there are challenges in terms of how we should uh, 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 move forward. That is why we were saying we are quite familiar with uh, 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 the, 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 the challenges. Uh, uh, Chair, I think the director, if I have missed every, anything out, uh, Director Lope, I would request that probably also you attend to some of the matters that I could have left out. Chair, can we allow the director first to, to, to raise the other issues, then I will note, I've noted you, Honorable Mkalipi, you'll be followed by Mr. Foster. There's something that I know, based on what the MM has just said, you will have to deal with. Can the director deal with that first? is directed by the MM. Um, thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. Um, let me first uh, acknowledge uh, the presence of all honorable members and uh, say all protocol observed. I will uh, respond to some of the issues that were raised. I'm trying to, to see if my video can be, I, not used to the Zoom platform. We can see you proceed. You oh, are you here. can see me. Yeah, with okay. us. All right, uh, thanks. We can uh, thanks, see you. Thanks, Honorable Chair. The, the first issue that I would uh, like to respond to is the issue of the technical audit. Uh, the issue of technical audits were raised um, when NERSA 
came to do the compliance audit. Uh, this issue were raised by Agri Litaba to NERSA on several occasions. And NERSA said to, to Agri Litaba that they don't have resources to do a technical audit. But the technical audit also, together with the compliance audit, belongs to NERSA as the, as, uh, uh, as the regulator. And uh, Agri Litawa then uh, uh, said they want the technical audit. And NERSA said, if you want the technical audit, you must pay for it. But the report will still belong to NERSA. And that issue was abandoned. And then NERSA then facilitated the, the issue of the electricity forum. Uh, I just want to correct uh, the issue that was raised by uh, Mr. Foster that uh, uh, Agri Litawa established the electricity forum. The electricity forum needs to be established by the licensee, a supplier, in terms of the license conditions by NERSA. So NERSA then said we must establish that and we then identified all the stakeholders and we then established the, the, the electricity forum. The, the issue of the compliance audit, I think the MM has already mentioned that there were issues of, uh, of the capacity of the network to supply. Uh, the capacity, we don't have any issues with the capacity. We do have capacity. Um, where we had, uh, we, were we were foreseeing that we will have a problem with capacity was in the Zanin main substation that is now nearing completion. But in the areas that uh, mostly agri Taba is operating, we don't have uh, issues of capacity. Our networks can supply any any application for, 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 for a connection. Um, there was also the issue that was raised about um, the fact that uh, the 100 million is being spent mostly in town. I don't think uh, that is uh, an accurate uh, a, a, a statement because uh, if you can see all those overhead lines, uh, the projects of lines that are on that uh, on, on, on the presentation are all in rural areas. And all the other components that are mentioned there are in rural areas. In fact, our town network, it's, uh, it's stable and we are not spending a lot in the town network. It's only the Zanin main substation and also some, uh, the SS1 substation that was indicated there and some few areas that uh, we are also spending the money. And this money, I must indicate that we are spending in collaboration with the DBSA based on all these issues that were raised by NERSA. And NERSA is also monitoring in all our steering committee meetings, NERSA is present to monitor what, whether we are using this money to address all the issues that have been raised. And uh, there was an issue about uh, ESCOM active partnering. The, the issue about ESCOM uh, active, active partnering was uh, in fact raised by ourselves in one of our meetings with ESCOM. We've been collaborating with ESCOM for, for a long time uh, because uh, the communities of Nkwankwa Linyenye, uh, they are willing through our network and those communities are also in greater Zanin municipality. So ESCOM was always assisting us uh, in terms of uh, uh, breakdowns and all those things that were affecting also their customers. But now they came to a point where they are saying, but uh, if we were to collaborate with you further, it means uh, we have to account for all the expenditure that we are, we are incurring when we are assisting the municipality. And we then propose to them that, but uh, we've been assisting each other 
all along and we cannot all of a sudden now say, now we are not going to technically collaborate. And they, they, they then came up with this ESCOM active partnering initiative, which they said is a national initiative that they are implementing nationally to assist municipalities so that municipalities can continue being able to pay them because of the debt levels in, 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 in municipalities. And we then engaged and they made a presentation, but we still have to, we are hoping that at the end of this month, we'll be going to council with an item where we will then uh, indicate areas that uh, of priority that we are going to prioritize. We will then, uh, as indicated chair, that we need to set the timelines we are just waiting for a council resolution and then we will then engage ESCOM with a council resolution that they said they want. And we will then set the timelines of the agreements and everything. I'm not sure if there are issues that uh, I've left out, uh, but uh, I think I've, uh, uh, there was an issue about uh, assistance offered to municipality and the municipality not uh, uh, taking up uh, the assistance. We do accede to, to the request by, by farmers if they want to assist us. And there are several instances where farmers have assisted us uh, when maybe our trucks get stuck and all those kind of issues that are happening during our operations, during rainy seasons, and when trees fall over the lines and all that, farmers do assist us and we appreciate that. But what we, we, we then maybe sometimes uh, become also uh, uh, not to be said to be responding, is when the assistance then starts coming into the, 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 the financial systems and say, if I assist you with this, it means I will offset this from my account and all those things. And oh. that, that gives us a challenge regarding the, the MFMA of how are we going to, to then do these kind of things. But uh, generally we do accept when there are offers to assist us, which are not that complicated to say, we can rebuild this line, but after rebuilding the line, then we must then uh, uh, offset this from our account with the municipality. Uh, so thanks, Chair. I, I, I think I've responded to, to the issues that uh, I, I have noted. Honorable Mkalipi, what was the issue? Honorable Mkalipi. Mr. Fosser, then I'll ask the mayor to come in after you. Mr. Matala, can you mute your microphone, please? Thank Over you, to you, Mr. Foster. Thank you, Honourable Chair. Uh, I think it's necessary for me, for me to just to reply on a couple of uh, issues raised. Uh, the first thing is just a correction on the email sent. There was 80 emails sent, with 63 of them had no reply. And just take note, uh, over five years is about 60 months. So that's not even more than two emails per month. So it's not nitty gritty emails that has been sent. Numerous of those emails was uh, uh, as requested times for uh, electricity forum meetings, um, which we have not any response. Look at the detail we presented. The second uh, thing is that the box and fire, it's just one of the examples. The rest we can keep on mentioning with the long list. It just keeps on happening. Um, the third point is, I said Agri Litawa initiated the establishment of the Electricity Forum. My question is, would it have been established without Agri Litawa's initiative or action? 
and I doubt it. The third thing is uh, uh, there was a question for, from one of the speakers, and it was mentioned uh, with the last speaker as well, regarding the assistance of the farmers. Uh, and I would like to, to just mention one example is the clearance of the vegetation, which was just mentioned. Um, all the farmers, I can assure you, will be of assistance on their own properties to do that. But in, in some of the instances, it's, it was the answer was, no, there have been subcontractors appointed to do the job. So just in response, in short, uh, regarding that. Thank you, Chair. Majoro, may I Over to you. Thank you once more, Chairperson. Honorable Chair, first uh, let me point out that uh, I am not very much happy about the, uh, the atmosphere that prevails between us and the agri tower because I know we are not in any competition uh, and I know we've been working together and I know we've got a, a potential to correct. But as members, honorable members did ask, as I stated earlier, it is a fact that we are not happy that um, uh, without having said, uh, like I indicated that at the initial stage, I sat with the leadership of Agri Taba, pointed out that we are very much feeling that whenever there are challenges, let them to end with them. And I would suspect that uh, there's really, as a political leader, might be taking these things too far to the extent that uh, I sometimes meet her and we talk about it. Mayor, Mayor, she's addressed as Honorable Van der Veld, please. Can you address thank you, thank you, Honorable Van der Veld? Honorable, honorable Van der Veld, please. Can you do that? Honorable please. Van der Veld. Uh, Honorable Desiree, uh, Honorable Desiree van der Waard, we, we, sometimes when we meet, uh, we do share about the challenges that we have. And I always say to him, raise those things with us uh, in a very cordial uh, uh, approach. But let me, in the main, accept that if there are still certain challenges around communication, besides what would have happened, we will go further, Chairperson, to make sure that we improve and address all those things. Communication would be two-way. That if they communicate to the municipality and the municipality communicate to them, uh, that would mean there's an improvement. I would suspect you might find that uh, if one customer sent a particular email to maybe even a junior uh, staff member who just respond, maybe they resolve a particular problem without agreeing on a particular protocol that would say, yes, the municipality has responded to this particular email. But those are the things which, for me, they are manageable because they are simple administrative issues. And the MM is here, the director is here, the leadership of Agri, Agri Tabada are here. Let's agree that we shall be able to find each other and be able to, to move forward. The, there was a question whether in the main, our understanding is the pictures that have been shown and the work that we do respond to the challenges that are there uh, in Zanin. It is true because we are not only hearing the problems today here. Honorable Chairperson, like I pointed out, it has been our major concern. In fact, if you were to go back to some of the speeches that we delivered as early as 2016, uh, they point out the challenge of um, this particular problem of infrastructure maintenance and other stuff. And that is why we have said we have come up with a very aggressive uh, uh, approach in terms of maintenance. The other key issue is that uh, AgriLitaba is part of the IDP reform. We have made sure that they are part so that whenever we are dealing with IDP budget processes, they are part. And I think even in the last, uh, the final, uh, budgets, uh, IDP reform were way to finalize the issue of, of the budget. IDP, uh, uh, Agri Tower was part of us. 
But I, I really don't like it that um, we come to this level of the meeting and start arguing about the issues that we can be able to deal with here in the year at home. I must also ag accept or accede to the fact that uh, in terms of vegetation maintenance, in one of the meetings we did discuss and the issue that the chairperson is raising that uh, some of the farmers were saying, if it is within our own uh, 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 yards, et cetera, we'll be able to make a contribution and uh, clear. And that's what is called public, uh, uh, private public uh, uh, partnership. For us, it assists so that at the end of the day, the issues of electricity uh, are, are helpful to all of us. But like the MM shared with us, to say, Honorable Chairperson, greater than any municipality, if you looked at the area, generally, uh, once there is rain, vegetation grows at a very, very high speed to the extent that we experience challenges. Perhaps it's a matter that we must be able to also uh, engage COCTA, COCTA at other level to say, uh, apparently, our resources, we are not able to respond adequately to the needs uh, of electricity in Zanin. Because as we see, we take loans, we use our own funding to try and manage this particular problem. But we don't seem to maximally achieve, and it will take us long. But we have bought uh, transformers and all those things in order to make sure that electricity does no longer cheap as it used to. And I think our stakeholders should be able to appreciate and say, but where we are now, what are the challenges remaining? How, 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 how do we move further? Chairperson, one of the things that was creating problems was about the issues as highlighted, theft, um, fires, etc. But with theft, I think the chairperson acknowledged that we, we have appointed companies somewhere in other transformers we put we put uh, 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 cameras, which of course come at a very high cost. But we understand that we are investing here because for us as greater than any municipality, agriculture is the backbone of our, our economy. And that is why we have uh, such serious stakeholders forums in which we know that we share information and they are able to make their own inputs as well. And therefore, Chairperson, the rest of the other issues I think we shall be able to, in fact, I'm saying to, I make no commitment here that uh, we should be able to retreat back to our, our place, have a session again, identify challenges that are outstanding, be able to agree on the way forward. Where we are unable, we should be able to cry out loud to our government and say, here are the challenges that we have and they're going to negatively impact on our economy. However, I would also urge before you, that uh, it's true as raised by honorable members that uh, we are a government, there is a province. If uh, honorable Desri van der Waal has got issues, she should freely be able to raise them with us uh, without contesting so that we're able to resolve the economic backbone of our uh, local. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let me allow the MEC then it will be followed by a, a, a Honorable Mkalipi. Thank you. MEC. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. It was just to respond to two issues that were raised by Honorable Mkalipi and uh, Honorable Direko. The first was to check whether, yeah. as the provincial government, yeah, but... uh, sorry, my apology, President Mizi. The Honorable Mkalipi wanted to know whether, as a provincial government, we were aware of all the challenges before the petition could be sent to Parliament. I must confirm here that uh, the only time we knew about the challenges and started to interact was when we got the referral from the petition and started to engage the municipality. Uh, the petitioners 
uh, has never interacted with our department or the office of the MEC for that matter to try to resolve the impasse which were there between GTM and themselves. So we started to engage it uh, now and uh, was able to uh, support the municipality where they required our support. The second question was in relation to uh, Honorable Direko about uh, her uh, losing me due, due to network, whether we are planning to rebuild some substations uh, for Zanin, and if so, when will be that time, but also the budget com uh, committed. Uh, it could be the network problem that you could not necessarily get me right. Uh, we did not necessarily confirm that we do have a budget. We don't have a budget. What we were saying as part of that is that including with the MIG allocation does not necessarily as a conditional grant allow for electrification as such. But what we said was we will be continue to be supporting their projects uh, through our unit, their MIG, uh, monitoring that will be able to support on the work that is done to ensure that through the petition that they have been submitted, we are helping the municipality to resolve. But there is not necessarily money or budget or uh, allocation of some sort that the department has. So it could be that uh, I was missed by Honorable Director. Hence, I'm trying to clarify that part. Those were the two issues I wanted to clarify, Chair. Thanks. Thank you, MEC. I'll allow Honorable Mkalipi then followed by Honorable Brink in that order. Honorable Mkalipi. It's for the second time I'm calling you, you're not coming back to us. I wonder if it's your network. Then I'll allow Honorable Brink. Over to you, Honorable Brink. Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can. Um, please uh, permit me to uh, leave my cameras uh, switched off, uh, the, Chairperson. Are you also affected by load shading like some of us? No, I'm not. I'm just, uh, I've had to move around uh, in my house and... Uh, Network. The, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, Chair, you know, I, I want, I, I would like us to come to a solution in this matter. I, I honestly, I, you know, the, the mayor complaining about the fact that he has to appear before parliament, uh, I... It, it's astonishing. Uh, I've never, I've never had somebody complaining that they've had to appear before Parliament. When you get a petition to appear before Parliament, you do so. You don't say that uh, you, you shouldn't have been there. You address the issue. That is part of respecting the institution of Parliament. Uh, if if the mayor had an open door, uh, we wouldn't have this meeting. So let's just uh, stop harping on about that. And, and uh, Chair, uh, what I would really like to hear is what is the time frame that the municipality is providing to address the prolific power outages affecting these petitioners? We've seen slides, we've seen numbers, uh, references to capital projects. Uh, we've now been told that those capital projects are in fact relevant to the situation of the petitioners. Can we please get a commitment from the municipal manager uh, as to when will these uh, uh, paper promises relate into a solution to the technical problem uh, affecting the petitioners? Um, because it seems that the, the response, the tenor of the response is there is no problem or the problem is already solved. Why are we here? Uh, while in fact, the details of when the problem will be fixed haven't been uh, provided. Then Chair, um, 
can we please get an indication of when last the electricity forum met and then when will it meet next um because i get the impression that the electricity forum isn't really meeting thanks chair okay i think that's the only end that i can see that's far. Uh, over to you. Over to you, uh, M M and Ex and Mayor. Can you respond to the issues as raised? Uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Honourable Chairperson, and thanks to. Uh, where, have you where, where have you disappeared to? Can we can see you? I'm trying to uh, put myself right. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, well, in brief, Chair, the, the MM will deal with the uh, these technical issues. But just to make it clear to the Honourable Portfolio Committee. complain about uh, it would be ideal that whenever we identify problems we are able to at a level share the problems and together uh, we are able to deal with them because we are willing and in case certain things are not uh, done as expected uh, the province is also here we can deal with them. I was, I was responding to the issue raised earlier about issues coming directly there. I'll never complain about appearing before a committee of government. However, uh, I've made a, a, a commitment that uh, although I'm not in a position myself as a political leader to put time frame to say we are more than willing to retreat to Greater Zanin and uh, uh, continue to vigorously in, intensively engage with AgriLitawa and all the relevant stakeholders, with a view to having a very pragmatic, pragmatic plan which will help all of us to be aware and close the gaps around communication as identified so that we no longer have these issues of uh, we've written this and they have not responded. I'm taking that responsibility to say I'll have a meeting to make sure that such things are uh, closed because for me, communication uh, does not even need uh, big forums. It's a matter that we should be able to identify where are the gaps. And we zoom straight to the communication problem and address it because all of us here through those uh, various social platforms that we can do, but also having continuous engagement as the MM was in. By the MM with the Honorable Chairperson, deal with the rest of the other issues. Thank you very much. MM. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, before I deal with the specific questions, I just thought in our responses, uh, there was an omission, and particularly from the question that you asked, uh, Madam Chair, I just thought I should give a background. Uh, the reference you were making to was page 19. Uh, <clears throat> Chair, uh, here we were trying, where you were uh, making mention of existing transformer position not reachable by crane. That was the old problem. Now, the new, uh, in terms of addressing the problem, the new transformer now is reachable by crane. What used to happen in the past there were more than 10 structures that were installed by hand, no access to machinery and equipment and material carried by hand for more than a kilometer. So those were the challenges where you will find that is why there will be outages and all that. But with the new investments that we have put in, now these things are reachable by crane. I just thought I should uh, uh, clarify that uh, that uh, that if that is why we put uh, the pictures in there. 
che a honorable brink it's asking a very important question to say where are the timelines and we were mainly focusing on the petition as per dealing with outages, power dubs, uh, uh, low voltage, and poor maintenance. So our presentation was largely focusing on uh, the areas that were raised in the petition. But um, uh, uh, the gentleman from Agri Litawa raised a very critical strategic issue, which we as council also are looking at. That the 100 million that we are spending on infrastructure, it's a drop in the ocean. Uh, the report obviously showed that we need to be spending almost more than a billion rent uh, with regard to the electricity infrastructure. Now, that is why we have linked the issue of uh, electricity infrastructure and the problems around it with the revenue enhancement strategy so that we collect more and then we are able to capitalize the infrastructure. And uh, Honorable Brink, we have not yet arrived at that point where we will be able, I, I will be misleading this committee if I would be able to say that these are the time frames. but we have started with the program, like as I've said in the presentation, we have a roadmap in terms of how we are going to deal with a, a, a revenue. I mean, we have already started with remote reading for large power users. We have already started with a, 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 a spot metering. We are taking a, a report to council in the next council to roll out prepaid meter and all that. So those are all uh, activities. We have also enhanced our debt, uh, our debt uh, collection program also. It's starting to bear fruits and all that because it is only when we increase our revenue that we can be able then to seriously say that we are going to uh, uh, invest in the infrastructure and address uh, uh, the, the issues. I just thought I should uh, bring that to the attention of the meeting, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honorable Brink. MEC, we want you to comment, also proposing a way forward, how do we then move forward on this matter? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, first is to appreciate uh, all the petitioners for having raised their matter in a more peaceful manner by uh, putting the petition to the parliament uh, without necessarily going out to the streets and try to destroy some of the uh, basic services amenities which are there in the municipality in a bid to want to resolve the issue of electricity. They must be commended for that, but also coming here to the forum uh, and to the portfolio committee and show and appreciate the little work that municipality has done up to so far, but also commit to play a role uh, like they indicate in some instances that they do have some uh, who have got the knowledge or to support the uh, 
uh, municipality within the legislation as Mr. Leop, uh, the technical or the electrical service director said that they do work with them uh, to assist the work that is there. It is true that uh, with the 100 million that has been set aside to refurbish uh, electrical substations and power lines will not necessarily be enough. It will be for the municipality to be supported, to be looking into also their revenue enhancement strategy that can collect revenue that can be invested into. Uh, I think the department will also be very, I do have my DTG, my HOD here, and the people from the uh, municipal infrastructure grants, they will be able to look out the way, support the municipality through our municipal finance in terms of ensuring that the revenue enhancement strategy of the municipality become implementable for them to be able to do that. But also to look at the issue of the communication, uh, despite that uh, they were uh, different uh, uh, understanding on the communication by both the petitioners and the municipality. I think through public participation uh, with the forums that are available for them, we should be able to enhance and uh, close the gap uh, that will not necessarily uh, allow for miscommunication between the two. Uh, we will not have the enough resources uh, at the same time to resolve all the challenges as they've been presented here. But communicating with the forum and making sure that the forums, as they are there, uh, they get to be uh, involved. I will suggest, Chairperson, that uh, maybe whenever they are meeting in their forums, uh, maybe they should be able to inform the department so that we become part of that, so that we can be able to see the challenges so that next time when we appear in the portfolio committee like this, we come with the informed because we will also be participating. You might have seen in their energy forum in terms of their uh, project steering committee, the department is not necessarily part of that. We don't necessarily have the luxury of a staff complement that will be always be everywhere. But if they can be able to uh, submit the invitations to the department, will be able to be part of the uh, meeting so that we can be able to support both the uh, farmers and the community, but also support the municipality. And I think we are capable of supporting that so that we don't necessarily be left behind and come at the tail end of the challenges so that we become part of the problems so that we can be part of the solutions in resolving the challenges that affect our people. Uh, with all what I've said, uh, the HOD, the DDG, and our staff are here to also support the work that is there. Thanks very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Um, um, the question is when last did the electricity forum meet? And when is it meeting again? Raised by Honorable Brink, you didn't answer that. Can you quickly deal with that? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, my apology for the omission. Uh, you are quite right, Madam Chair. The question was posed. Uh, <clears throat> the Energy Forum is supposed to meet quarterly. There has been some, uh, I would say, disruption particularly with regard to COVID. Uh, I know that uh, we are now uh, on virtual platforms and so forth. Uh, then the committee needs to be resuscitated. Uh, but over and above the committee, Chair, I, I must emphasize this. There is constant communication between our team and the the different uh, uh, members of Agrilitaba as and when. There is fierce co uh, uh, communication, uh, Madam Chair, on WhatsApps. That's why I'm saying even my phone, uh, Mr. Foster also, I know his phone is also busy. My phone is also busy, there is communication. But uh, the Energy Forum, uh, we will have to resuscitate that. 
uh, there has been a disruption because of uh, COVID, uh, but we will, uh, uh, taking it from this meeting, uh, we will have to resuscitate the work and, uh, and, and start meeting again. You have been on record saying that <coughs> it is quarterly. It's now almost a year we've been under this new normal. And the members of this forum, there are people who work with gadget. Life has been going on. So we can't be blaming COVID on this. I know as council have been able to convene even special council meetings via Zoom, a lot of them. So for you to come here and tell us that you've got a stakeholder, that you are not convening the meeting because you see it bothered that, uh, and I can see my mayor at some point was very upset when we were raising this issue, the issue of communication because it's a fact, it's a reality. And we always say this, once people resort to approach parliament, it's not that all the time they are spiteful or whatever. It's after they have exhausted all their internal mechanism, communicating, because indeed, if these forums were meeting, you. This was going to make your life very easier, AMM. Because you will say these are the matters that we discuss at that forum, and this was the and the absence of you meeting in that critical stakeholder meeting where you'll be taking each other on board. Because I will also make a follow up to say if you're saying there is a steering committee that is meeting as well. Because I think this, like as you had the MEC raising concerns to say, if we're invited also as the department, we will come and attend meetings. Because where I'm seated, where is this steering committee actually reporting to? Because it has got the responsibility to, to, to report in this forum. These are simple things that we cannot create structures for them to become white elephants or do that for just a malicious compliance. I think when you leave this meeting tonight, you're going to send us a roster that you'll, you'll get all relevant people you know at their stakeholders. Everybody's on Zoom these days, everybody's on Microsoft Teams. And you must facilitate, send the link so that you continue to, to communicate. And uh, from our stakeholders, the petitioners, I should think you were within your own right to do what you have done. It's provided for in the constitution of this country. And we want to assure you that as parliament, once you come to us, we, we are your last resort. And then we want to assure you these are the matters that will continually follow up with the municipality. If it means us also then calling the relevant stakeholders where they that's why I said earlier, I wanted Salga's comment. Maybe before I do that, because I'm also a bit intimidated by a series of events that I called for earlier, no one answered, but let me deal with that. Honorable Mkalipi, followed by Honorable M. Van der Waal, and then I'll allow Salga to comment as well. Then we must close this meeting. Honorable Mkalipi, are you now able to speak? I've called you twice. You couldn't come to the podium. Honorable Mkalipi? Honorable Mkalipi? Recording stopped. Recording in progress. Honorable Mkalipi? Honorable Van der Waal? Thank you, Chairperson. I'll be very brief. I just thought um, before you close the meeting, um, I would just like to say thank you. Um, I think uh, back and throw, we've, we've accused, we have spoken, we have raised concerns. 
And I know you, and I know that you would do follow-ups and that you will make sure that none of us are uh, running away from one another. We all live in this town. We all care for the communities and we care for our uh, economy and that we are dependent on one another. None of us can run away from that. And um, from your commitment that there will uh, be more engagement, uh, the communication should be jacked up. I would also just like to say, Chairperson, there must be a commitment to after tonight to, to get together, start talking, fix the communication. That's just but one part. The fact of the matter is there must be a commitment of the municipality to go seek assistance at other levels, whether it be ESCOM, NARSA, the provincial government and its departments, or us through parliament. We have to have a commitment that we will listen to each other's challenges and that we will find common solutions that will benefit our people and our economy. It cannot be that we meet and we talk about our challenges and there's always a reason why it will not work. People are, are, are reaching out to the municipality and government and we must listen and we must take those hands um, and we must get together uh, and make it work. That's what a petition is all about, is to be heard, not to penalize people. It's to be heard and fix it because it's for the better of our area. And Chairperson, thank you for the time. And yeah, the mayor, we'll see each other again. I'm, I'm, you know, very well. I'm very close and I've got your number and everybody else. This is not a threat to anybody, Chairperson, as you know, and your portfolio committee. This is to fix what has broken, but we will never fix it if we don't commit on listening to each other and reach out to one another and accept all the help we can get. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Like I indicated in my opening remarks, this is not the first time that we're dealing with credits and any matters. Uh, municipalities in relation to petition matters. And then I should think this is a consequence of the structures that we created that are not meeting. And we are saying people have got every right uh, after exhausting all local avenues to escalate the matters to us. Uh, and then the then it means then moving forward, then we can then deal with that because myself, I'm of the firm view that once this forum sits and discuss all these matters of mutual interests, then that's how you're going to strengthen your communication because all the issues that relate to, to, to these uh, issues around uh, electricity supply, uh, power outages and the issues around maintenance can be resolved because it won't be right for the MEC to, to hear it for the first time here in this forum. That's the issue of visitation. We are going to approach the MEC now to assist us because you can see it's also the MEC's commitment to say if we work together because that's the role of, of the province to support these municipalities together with the district municipality. They've got that particular role to support that. But then if matters are also not escalated to them, they will never know. But then it's another situation where in then people are raising issues that are saying, you are failing to assist us as, communi us as communities, as businesses, and then this matter doesn't get, get attended to. That's why now it creates an area of conflict. We can assure you, Honorable Van der Waal, to say here we always preach accountability. That's why we're even now meeting these late hours of the night. That is also at some point very much counterproductive, but because of our commitment to make sure that our people 
the people who made me and you and the rest of the colleagues to be members of parliament, we took an oath to serve them to the best of our ability. And that's precisely what we are doing. This matter, we are going to follow it up on a quarterly basis until we make sure that all these matters are addressed. Salga, can I direct you to also look at this matter? You were here, initially said you, I was going to allow you to speak. In our next engagement, if you can then also then submit a report on your assessment on these matters around a electricity provision in the city, then we can use that report also as work in progress. And then I hear it is a commitment in terms of the presentation that we see, we've seen here to say most of the projects I aimed to, to, to then address the issues as raised. So we'll monitor that and this issue of the agreements that has to be entered with, with ESCOM. They shouldn't just be staying there indefinitely without clear timelines. And this is a matter that is ongoing that will also request the municipality to continually update us together with uh, the province after council has taken that uh, resolution because this is the resolution that needs to be given a attention in between the 4th of June up to today. It's almost a month. The month has gone by since you've met with ESCOM. There's been commitments by now. I suspect council should be meeting if it is not yet met. I believe this is the matter that will be the agenda item of council if we are really seriously committed to solving the issue around the electricity crisis in the area. So that's where one wants to stop this meeting to say, we are going to deliberate on the recommendations that will also be shared with you as a committee when we meet with the view to also report back to to the community, but what I've said also is just a way of a way forward uh, based on all our discussions. You are going to send us the rooster of the electricity forum, the WhatsApp group. Yes, they are there as a means of communications, but when people meet formally, there are minutes, that uh, an agreement that uh, you can't do that through a WhatsApp group uh, forum uh, MM. People must meet, present plans. You can do present plans in a WhatsApp group MM. So have formal meetings, formally constituted meeting because I believe those meetings as you meet a stakeholder forum, these are the mean meetings that also make you generate items that the Council must um, attend to. So, the petitioners, we want to thank you so much for taking your time and having confidence in the National Assembly. Ourselves, as directed by the Speaker, we assist with this matter. We'll be able to update uh, the National Assembly regularly and also to do the necessary follow ups so that all your matters are attended to. So we're still going to also, as we progress, have to get the feeling of all those stakeholders, in particular, those ones that are sector departments like your NERSA, sector entities like NERSA and ESCOM. For them, for us to also understand, to say what role are they playing in resolving uh, this energy, challenges that are there within uh, the Tanini local municipality. So I want to end this meeting here to thank all of you for your participation. You have been a very great uh, audience and participants. I never had issues. Uh, the DG of DTA, uh, HOD and DDG from Limpopo, uh, the DG of DCOC and all the other senior managers from uh, 
Dikok. We want to thank you for attending this meeting. And uh, Missy, it's always a pleasure to have you in our meetings. We know you don't take these meetings for granted. And we know through your leadership, you are going to take the lead in making sure that the communities of Zanini get and disrupted electricity supply. We believe in your leadership, MEC, and we know you're going to lead this project for us as you are there in the province. Thank you so much, colleagues. The meeting gets adjourned. Thank you, Chi. Sure. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, Chair. Good night. Bye, bye, Chair. Bye, bye, Chair. Yes, good night. Good night, Chair. Go and sleep now. Good hey. night, Chair. Are you still driving that forty k home now? Yes. Who are you? Hey. So you must when bring. You you must bring the power here, man. From Tani, yeah, take it and bring it here. It's all over. Even myself here, I don't have power tonight. You don't have power tonight. <laughs> it's it's tough. Yeah. It's that's I'm why really my sure. network. That's also why my network was also going. Yeah. I realized that the the router that I was charging went off because there was no power. Okay. Okay. Mm. Mm. Then All it's right. okay, but okay. we're meeting on Thursday, ne, colleagues? Yes, yes. Yes, Shirin, can you also bring along all the minutes so that we can attend to them on Thursday, please? Yes, yeah, the host okay. is still here. And Mukalipi's hand remained up, but she's not here with us. Uh, Chief of Staff of Limpopo, Derek. Good night. Good, good night. Good night, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very sure. much, Honorable Chair. Good night. Good night, Honorable Chair.